Okay, this is the progress of me making the peplum, which goes around the waist and over a quarter of the skirt. I'm just going to explain about a slight issue we had at the end. Now when I did the original mock-up, it seemed to work out just fine and that these were separate how they're supposed to be. So if you look at the picture, these two pieces here should start to separate. Now we're not really sure what went wrong, but to get around the problem for now, what we're doing is we've put a couple of pins in place which holds it to the main skirt. So if you should try this and you have the same issue, you can always, as I say, just try and pin it in place, get somebody to do this for you. Okay, now on to how to make it. In this progress tutorial, you'll see me just using one pattern piece to make the whole thing. But after what has happened after finishing it, uh, I've revised the uh, front sections so when you come to do it I would recommend that you don't come out so sharp at angle here for your front so I recommend using this piece just for your back sections the new revised front sections as you can see don't come out quite so sharp so what I've basically done is I've brought this in a bit so this is now my new front section and you will of course lose another centimetre of this when you come to line it later on. So although there doesn't seem to be that much difference on uh, camera when I actually came to do um, a mock-up with the revised pieces it made quite a difference to the front to not have this angle come out so steep. This is the start of creating the peplum for the dress, which is almost like a, a kind of a mini skirt with a split down the front, if that's what you want to call it, but the term is peplum. And this is my pattern piece and it needs four pieces all together to make each part. Now again, because of the fuzzy photos and only so much video footage, I can make out that there's one seam here, so that has to be four pieces, and then there's a seam down the back, which can be seen on this photo here. Now we've decided to do this as a separate piece because of issues with getting it on and off and over the body itself and over the skirt. So it's got to have an opening and at this point we have to work out what kind of band or turnover to put on the top but that will come later just quickly showing it laid out on the floor here of course your measurements will be different to mine firstly I have a 24 and a half inch waist and along the bottom here it measures in centimetres, approximately 55 centimetres. The left hand side here, each piece has a slightly different shape on the one side as you'll notice. Now it's the angle slightly different. That one measures 37 from bottom to top and the right hand side of this measures just 30 nearly, or just over. Just skipping ahead for a moment, I just wanted to quickly show you this um, mock-up I've done to show you what the shape would should, should look like once it's opened out and you almost get like a kite kind of shape which was quite weird. Kind of a keyhole look in the middle, <laughs> as I call it. What I'm going to do now is take it right apart at the seams again to show you what I've done with it. 
what I'm going to do. Okay, taking the one section here, what I've used is, for the outside, is the same chiffon that I used on the sleeve for the dress and the outer panel for the bodice and I'm lining it with the uh, same fabric that was used on the uh, bodice itself and on the main skirt underneath it all. So what I've done on all four pieces is I've just pinned the two layers together at this point and as I say do that for all four thing I have done just to help hold it in place is to sew the two layers together sewing all the way across the top and then I've gone and get ahead and get some piping and use some basic fabric glue and I've worked out what my design is I'm going to do a more simplified design because without a proper picture yet again I can't really see what to do so I'm going to just be creative and use my own design so I've been sticking pieces of piping down which I'll catch stitch in some silver thread I've done this on all four pieces so they should all more or less match up the next thing to do is to sew all your pieces together <coughs> after that I've started to do my pattern using these silver lurex metallic flowers I bought off eBay and I'm starting off from the back and working towards the front I've just been sewing them on one by one and this is going to be the front edge and I don't want to get too close because I'm going to be lining this later and also I need to have a separate uh, decorative strip going downwards down the front so I finished about a good three inches inwards. Okay, it's now several months later, by the way, <laughs> and I finally finished decorating my peplum. Yippee! Right, let's have a good look at it. Here I have the silver lurex stars, some silver piping, uh, which I've used here and there around the whole thing in places. A diamante chain, silver shade Swarovski crystals, uh, some bead appliques, which I bought off eBay from India. Uh, which you can see on my website for a description of where I got all my beads from. Uh, more crystals, more chain, rose sequins. At the bottom I've got these pink beads, large ones, and then some of those little ones. And I've just done a row of three big ones, a row of three little ones. And it's taking me around. I've more or less kept the same design and pattern at the bottom here, that continues all the way around. And I sort of try to keep the same sort of design on each section. So each one's like got one of these, same here as well, and over here and there. Now I've still left these edges clear because I want to finish decorating them last because I'm not 100% on how much room I'll have left over. I've got an idea but I thought I'd just leave a bit more because I know I've got to do a, stri a decorative strip going down the front so I thought I'd wait off on that until the end. The 
next thing to do is put your lining pieces together which should be exactly the same pieces with exactly the same seam allowance as you've done on your outer fabric the same as if you'd line any bodice I'm using a very lightweight uh, silky fabric or silky lining okay next you want to attach the lining um, mum recommends start pinning from the top where the waist is pin all those sections in first place making sure all your flaps are flat on both sides next take the corners and pin those in place like so and then take the next corner make sure those seams line up and pin those and then the same the other side and then you want to pull your lining straight and flat and then start pinning the edges in between can be a bit tricky and requires a bit of patience next I'm going to be sewing not around the curve where the waist is don't sew that bit so from here down to the corner not right to the corner stop about there which you'll see a bit later on I'll show you a bit better after I've done it and I'll be sewing about a centimetre up or just under across the bottom to help me I've actually tacked the layers together because I want to be able to take the pins out when I put it under the machine okay I've now sewn down as I said don't sew across the top down the sides here about a good inch in and then I've sewn across the bottom being very careful of the beads I put along the bottom ideally I should have left another centimetre on the bottom to allow for this but I didn't so anyway now that is done we're going across the bottom then the same we come up the other side and stop there next I've got to clip the corners to turn it inside out and then reduce some of the bulk off these seams as well because there's too much so I'm just going to cut those down a bit and then fingers crossed yippee okay now the lining has been sewn down we've carefully turned it the right way up and I hence very carefully turned it the right way out <laughs> you can see now why I kind of wish I'd left a bit more on the bottom edge because we probably won't be able to iron that edge very well so it might have to have a sewing line across the bottom which I could always disguise it with some smaller crystals if I wish to but basically we've had to pull, because this is still open, we've pulled the lining really tight put some pins in to hold the layers together for now so it doesn't move ok I forgot to say before I turned, uh, sewed on my lining uh, I actually peeled away the ends of this uh, cord like so because I want to have a strip going down now I don't want this cord in a way plus it's annoying if uh, the sewing over as well so I just peeled these away before I actually sewed the lining onto the back forgot to mention that earlier okay now on to making the skirt waistband now we use this method time and time again in most of my big skirts and videos so this will be probably be the last time I explain this in a full video so what I'm going to do is do a separate video making a waistband so that in the future if anybody asks I can direct them straight to that video but basically you take your waist measurements and mine is 24 and a half inches or approximately 62 and a half centimetres 
and you add, because we want this to overlap at the back, or front I should say on mine, um, I've added an extra couple of centimetres onto each end. Not only do you add more on because of turning over and neatening, but we want a bit extra because of what we want to do, which we'll see later on with the overlap. Right, so also you want to cut this double the width that you want. I want to end up with mine about one inch wide, so it's double that, and we made this approximately two inches wide, give or take a little bit, but basically you're going to be folding it in half to your finished width or desired width. Now I don't really want my uh, waistband to be quite as stiff as what I've used on previous dresses so I'm using this more flexible and just slightly stiff uh, herringbone tape and you cut this nearly the same length as your strip but slightly shorter shorter meaning by about two centimeters to fit inside the uh, band later on next cut off some of the bulks off the seams of the ends and turn your waistband the right way out give it a good press with the iron okay i've now given it a good press with the iron i folded my waistband in half to mark the halfway point with a pin. Next we'll be attaching this to the uh, edge of the peplum. Same principle if you're just doing a skirt. You take your waistband. Now you take the one edge, the back, and you take this edge where I've got my fingers and you pin those two together so your lining should be loose and this should still be open. You do not pin all the layers together. It's a bit tricky, you have to line up that edge with, sorry about this, <laughs> with that edge together but making sure you're only pinning this edge to this edge like so. So I hope you can see what we're doing there. Okay, I've now gone along as I've said and pin these two inside sections together. When you get to the end you should have this little bit of excess. The first one where we started round here should meet up with the edge of the peplum and this one should have a bit more coming out. Next what we have to do is tack these layers together, uh, take out all the pins and then sew it as normal. Next the lining has been uh, pulled up really tight well, not. and we've turned the waistband over ready for catch stitching on the back of the lining. I've now finished decorating and filled in the end bits and also done my decorative piece down the side. finish catch stitching my waistband on underneath. Now I'll need to attach some sort of fastening on the fronts here. These are some of the beads I'm going to use to do the dangles at the front and back. I've decided on this combination to do two silver and two pink and use these little pink Bicone crystal beads. 
in between, like so. Okay, I'm just going to quickly show you how to make one of these bead dangles. First of all, you cut a very, very long piece of thread, which you need, then need to double. Okay, I've just put it against the chair here so you can see a bit better. Basically, now you've doubled your thread, you've got to use a, a needle with a fairly larger eye. Pull the thread right the way through until it's roughly about half. Okay, so you can see here what I've done. Next, you're going to take these two ends and tie a knot. There you go, tie the knot like so. Take the one corner and start threading it through the back as if it was a single strand of thread. You can now see where the knotted end is. Okay, first take one of these small beads, thread that on, pull it up, then do the next one, and carry on doing this for all the rest of the beads that I have here on the table in the order you want them to go on. On the last one, the holes are on the side, so what you do, thread it through, and then take this end and go up through all the crystals. You might have to do this a bit at a time. Now you've pulled the needle and thread all the way through the beads. It might need a bit of tweaking and pulling, um, but you don't want to pull them up so tight that they do that. So you just want a little bit of a gap there, and then take the thread and then just tie it off as you would normally do any piece of hand sewing. But again, being careful not to pull it too tight. And this is what it should look like when you've finished. And then those will just hang down the front like that. The last thing we've done is on the peplum here we've attached some velcro and some on the bodice so that when the bodice goes on me this will hook onto this like so we've also attached a small hook and eye near the top here Fix those together once it's on me. Okay, I said at the beginning of the video I did have a bit of an issue after we finished it, but if you were to alter that angle as said so it doesn't quite come out so sharp, it should be okay. Um, you can't see, it's just really close up, but we've, that's where we put the pins. Just see one there, then that just holds it then. like so just going round to the side here and then round to the back 